Ice cream. We do have ice cream on board. Yes. What do you like? Noodles. We do have noodles on board. Yes. Oh, you want to raise your hand? Yes. Oh, ramen. Ramen. We do have ramen on board as well. Anyone else? Yes. What do you like? Spaghetti. Yes. Ice cream. Pizza. Yes. Yes, guys. Come on. Ice cream, yes. So we have a wide variety of meals from all over the world. About 200 different options. So let me show you guys some of those. Let me see what I have. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna keep this, maybe this, and this as well. Perfect. Oh, let's see what I got. For starters, this is gonna be a delicious shrimp fried rice! Wow! Doesn't this look delicious? Not yet, no. No? Oh, really? Not really. Oh, okay. Wow, that does look different. Uh, food might be a little different here, but there's a reason. You see, whenever we bring supplies up to the station, we have to calculate everything, especially the weight. And water is very heavy. So we use the process of dehydration to take all the water out. By doing so, this becomes very light and it can last longer, which is important because we're gonna be here for about six to eight months at a time. We need to make sure that all of our food lasts as long as possible. I also got myself some tea because I love drinking tea. And this are Beef enchiladas! Oh, yes, we have enchiladas oh. in Spain. Enchiladas. Claro que sí. Now, to, to prepare your meal, you're gonna come over here to the food rehydration unit. You're just gonna get some water in here. There we go. Let me get some for my tea. Perfect. Now, you're gonna let it soak in for a bit, and once it's ready, you'll rip it off and begin to eat. Now, if you guys notice, I don't have an actual table set up. I have no cups, plates, utensils, nothing set up. Does anyone have an idea why? Why I don't have anything? Anyone? Yes. You're very right. We're in microgravity, so everything's gonna float away. To deal with that little problem, we came up with a very simple solution. We just added Velcro to everything here. <laughs> and by using Velcro, if I'm busy, I can actually stick this to my uniform. And that way, I don't lose my lunch. Or if I'm busy with something, I can take this and place it by the wall. Perfect. My tea, it'll go down here. And my rice up here. There we go. And if I'm busy working on a project, I can be on the computer, grab it, snack on it, and keep on working. So the Velcro does come in handy. Now, normally, I would finish my lunch, but I can't do that today. Uh, and at least wanted to drink my tea, but I can't do that because, well, just because we're in space, that doesn't mean that Nature doesn't come calling. We also need you to use the restroom. And I'm so sorry about this, guys. I didn't get a chance to go, but I promise it's quick. I just need a moment to... Huh. Oh, okay. I'm so sorry about this. My apologies. Normally, there's a privacy screen there that I can actually remove Go in there, close it, and do my business. Is that there today? Someone took it. I don't know why. Don't you guys just hate it when people take things and they don't put it back where they belong? Oh, it's okay though. Just like an earth, sometimes we forget to. But this gives me a wonderful opportunity to show you guys how everything works here. You see, back on Earth, you use the power of water and gravity to get rid of your waste. Up here, 
We don't have any of that. Therefore, we're gonna use the power of suction. For that, we're gonna come over here and turn this thing on. The this is a waste ID compartment or space toilet. We're just gonna lift the lid. There we go. And this is what's going to happen. You're gonna grab a small plastic bag. You're gonna place it in there. Then you're gonna go in there, squat down, grab on to the rails, and pull for the very best. Because this is a very small seat with a very small opening. So you guys gotta have really good aim. <laughs> And trust me, because of microgravity, this is the worst place for anything to be floating around. No. Now, once we're done with our solid waste, everything's gonna be brought down to a compartment where once it's full, it's gonna get crunched up and shot out of the station so that it burns out on Earth's atmosphere for the whole world to see. So if at some point at night you're feeling romantic, you wanna come outside at night, look up at the stars, and you guys see a shooting star. Yeah, that's not always a shooting star. Sometimes just us using the toilet. <laughs> So if your wish doesn't come true, now you know why. <laughs> but then it's for the solid waste. For liquid waste, we're going number one. We're gonna use this hose. All we do is take off the lid, you place it where it needs to go, and you're going to drain your bladder. <laughs> and does anyone have an idea what we do with the liquid waste? Yes. You turn it into water. Wonderful. I'm glad you mentioned that. See, water is hard to bring to the station. We get fresh water once every six months. In the meantime, we must purify, reuse, and recycle wow. all water here. Uh, and now, you guys remember just a little while ago? my lunch up there? You guys remember my tea? You wanna know where I got the water for that tea from? Ah. Right here! <laughs> Seriously. Yep. This is the water for my tea, my coffee, my milk and juice, my meals, pretty much everything that I use water for, this is where I get it from. Now, this may seem a little gross at first, but trust me, this device purifies so well, it's better than tap water. And say for example, if you're in an emergency, such as being lost in the woods, or you're lost at sea, trapped in a hurricane, monsoon, many things that happen in the world. If you have one of these, you can purify your own liquid waste and survive a lot longer while you wait for rescue to arrive. So this could save your life. And believe it or not, we brought it down to Earth. So check your local shop. You never know. You might see it at a store near you. I really hope you're all going to buy one, right? No, it's OK. Think of it as emergency only. But as long as we're on the topic of water, how about if I show you guys how water behaves up here? On Earth, water just falls and splatters. Up here, let me show you guys. There we go, just a little more and perfect. See, because the strongest force acting on water is surface tension, it'll create bubbles. And if they come together, they make even bigger bubbles. And if they touch anything absorbent, like that towel over there, everything just gets soaked up like a sponge. And because more than 60% of the human body is made out of water. water, you guys are right. We're also affected by microgravity. So this is what's going to happen to our bodies in space. 
The liquids in your body are gonna rise to the top. They'll go from your legs and arms to your head, making it big and puffy. You're gonna feel sick at the beginning, nauseous even. Your eyes become black and gelatinous. Your arms and legs will look skinny. And this is called the chicken legs affair. That's not all. Your spine's gonna stretch, making you two inches taller. Problem is, you're not using your heart as much. So your heart is gonna shrink. that you spend on space. That's how long you have to be back on Earth to get back to normal. For this reason, astronauts have to work out every day, two hours a day, for as long as they're here. And this is our dual ergometer cycle, or it's just a space bike. Normally, I would climb on board and show you guys how it works. But out of curiosity, would anyone like to come up here and try it out? You were first and you were second. It's a little bit of the stretch. You were second. I got something for you later on. Okay? Just eat your ice cream. Hello, sir. What is your name? Connor. Connor? Very nice to meet you. Can I have a hand for Connor? Okay.
Wow. For this reason, we don't have any windows on the ISS because that can really mess with your internal clocks. Now, over here, we have our sleep rest training unit. And to get ready for sleep, we're gonna unstrap this, unzip this, and I think there was a young lady who's gonna come and help me out with this. So, yes, the lady with the stripes, come back. Hello there, nice to meet you. What is your name? Clarice. Clarice, very nice to meet you. Can I have a hand for Clarice?
you see very soon, within the next five years, for the first time in decades, we're going back to the moon. But from there, we're going to our lunar base camp, which we're working on right now. Oh, for the grand purpose of finally going to Mars. <coughs> and this happens thanks to all of you. So thank you for your support. And stay with us, because this will be exciting. As we push forward, we go further, and we head out into the great beyond. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.